keep on going with our study of light and how it interacts with matter. We talked a lot about mirrors. We've pretty much covered everything that has to do with reflection, when light bounces off of a smooth surface. What we're going to talk about today is refraction, the second thing that can happen when light and matter interact. Before we talk about the process of refraction, we need to talk about how the speed of light can change. Hang on, I hear you saying. Isn't the speed of light constant? Isn't that the thing that's so special about the speed of light? It is, but the way the speed of light is constant, and the reason that that's so important, has to do with reference frames and is, does not have to do with optics. We will talk about that, I promise. We will talk about um, that, that is basically special relativity. Um, it is super wacky, and we will talk about that in a few weeks. Right now, though, we're talking about the speed of light. Now, the speed of light is the same in a vacuum for all wavelengths, but if we think back to our original study of mechanical waves and sound waves, the speed of a wave has always been dependent on what? On the medium. And this is true for light rays as well. Light slows down when it's in a medium other than a vacuum. And the amount that the light slows down is given by the index of refraction. The index of refraction is sometimes also called the optical density of a substance. The bigger the index of refraction is, the more light slows down in this medium. So here's our equation. The symbol for index of refraction is a lowercase n. We usually give it a subscript i, like this is the substance we're talking about. And it's a pretty simple equation. It's c, which is the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by v sub i, where v sub i is the speed of light in this medium. So n sub i is the index of refraction. of the medium, and V sub i is the speed of light in that medium. Okay, a couple of things to note about the index of refraction. I said earlier that light is going to slow down in a medium that's not a vacuum, which means this speed is always going to be smaller than C. If we have a bigger number divided by a smaller number, that tells us that the index of refraction is going to be greater than 1 for any kind of substance. And the more greater than 1 it is, the more it slows it down. The other thing I want to say about the index of refraction, what are the units of the speed of light? Don't ever think this. It's not a trick question. Meters per second. And what about the units for the speed of light in any other medium? Still not a trick question. The units for speed are always going to be meters per second. So the units meters per second cancel meters per second, and the index of refraction is actually unitless. We don't have a lot of numbers in science that are. The last thing we encountered was probably the coefficient of friction, the mu k and the mu s. All right, so index of refraction depends on the medium, and it's how much light slows down. This equation is an important one. Put a box around it somewhere. So let's talk about what the actual value of n is for a few different media. We say that n for a vacuum. Are there two C's in vacuum? I don't know. Put an extra C if you want. I know there are two U's. The value of n in a vacuum is exactly 1, 1 point, all the zeros that you want to write. All right, most of the problems that we have solved have involved, so far, have involved light moving through air. And when you've done those calculations, because you started the UT Quest, right? Right? You've been assuming that the speed of light in air was the same. Well, it turns out that's a really good assumption, because the index of refraction of air is 1.0003. 
Does light slow down in air? I mean, yeah, technically. But we're going to pretend like the index of refraction of air is also equal to 1. Those two indices of refraction you should know, just because they're basically equal to 1. Um, other things you kind of have to um, look up in a table usually. Water is 1.33. We'll use that here in a few minutes. There are lots of different kinds of glass. It's really not fair for me to put glass up here as though it's one substance. But most types of glass are around 1.5. There are plastics. Plastics have more variety than glass does, but there are plastics that can be around 2.3 or 2.5. Um, the, there's not a maximum value for n. It can get much bigger than 1 if it needs to. So this gives us enough to get started. Because the question we were originally supposed to be asking was about refraction, was about how light changes when it goes from one medium into another. When light hits an interface, when light goes from one medium to another, it bends. I like to say that when light hits a mirror, it bounces, and then when light hits an interface, it bends. Um, it's just another word for refraction, but sometimes it's easier to think about it as a simpler word. And the way that we talk about this is about a cart moving from like pavement onto grass. And we think about the fact that this cart is going to have two wheels. And the two wheels are going to be separated by an axle. Let's pretend like somehow this is a weird magical cart that balances on two wheels. Whatever, just go with me. As it goes toward the interface, both wheels are moving at the same speed. Let's pretend like the space between those wheels stays the same. But at some point, because the cart is moving at an angle, one of the wheels is going to cross over into the grass. When it crosses over into the grass, this wheel slows down, but this wheel doesn't. So in the next interval of time, this wheel doesn't go as far, but the other wheel goes as far as it usually does. Once they've both crossed, they'll go back to moving at the same speed. That speed should be slower. The point here is that if I draw sort of a straight line path here, that the cart is traveling before and after it crosses the interface, interface, that path has bent. It bends as it goes across the interface. Don't worry too much about this picture and don't worry too much about this explanation. Um, just accept when I tell you that when a light ray hits an interface at an angle, that light ray will bend. The amount that it will bend is given by Snell's Law. Snell's Law is one of my favorite laws because it's fun to say. Snell's Law describes the bending of light at an interface, and this is what it looks like. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Where one is where the light starts out, the, in, the, first inter, the first medium, and two is the second medium. And that theta, we're going to measure just like we did with the um, reflected angles. We're going to measure it to the normal line. So let's imagine we have air and water. We have a light ray that starts out in air, and then it goes into water. Oh. I forgot to say earlier, the index of refraction of light changes based on wavelength just a little bit. Not usually enough for us to worry about the light, but the changing index of refraction with wavelength is how you get a prism. Um, so it's, it's nifty, it's fun, um, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of applications, except for like, you know, Pink Floyd album covers. All right, so let's have our light ray. I'm going to call that angle 30 degrees. I don't know how close it is. The index of refraction of air is 1. The index of refraction of water 
1.33. So the question is, what will the angle be in water? To figure that out, we use Snell's Law. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. N1 is 1 times the sine of 30 is equal to N2 is 1.33 times the sine of, that's what we're looking for, is theta 2. All right, so 1 times the sine of 30 is just the sine of 30. You, if you need to plunge it into a calculator, do it, but you might just know that the sine of 30 is 1 half. If so, your pre-cal teacher is super proud of you right now. So 0.5 is equal to 1.33 times the sine of theta 2. We're going to divide both sides by 1.33. This one I need a calculator for. Zero point three seven six is equal to the sine of theta two. All right, this is not the angle. This is the sine of the angle we're looking for. So to figure out what theta is, we're going to take the inverse sine of point three seven six. We're going to ask our calculator what angle has a sine of point three seven six. The number we started with was in degrees, so our calculator had better still be in degrees. So inverse sine of that answer gives me a theta of 22.1 degrees. So our refracted angle is less than our incident angle in this case. show a huge turn, but I promise it is. All right, this is generally going to be true. Whichever angle, whichever side of the interface has the larger n value will have to have the smaller theta value. And if we look at Snell's law, that makes sense. If the index of refraction goes up, the sine of theta has to go down. If the sine of theta goes down, then theta went down as well. So whichever side, I think of it as the, the line gets pulled towards the normal, like the light ray is pulled more towards the normal on the side with the bigger n value, that's what helps me remember this qualitatively. Okay, so that's a nice Snell's Law problem. Let me give you two to work as practice, and the answers will be in your quizzes. Um, we may have to find a different program to use quizzes, um, it turns out that the one I'm using is more expensive than I thought it was. I'm, I'm throwing myself on their mercy to try to get some sort of nice educator discount. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. That's what we do. All right, so let's work two different problems. Two more problems. Here's problem one for your viewing quiz. This time I'm going to have my light start in the water and go into the air. I'm going to have my light start in the water with an angle of 30 degrees, and I want to know what the theta 2 is in air. Okay? So that's question one. Question one is when a light ray goes from water into air, starting out at an angle of 30 degrees, what will the refracted angle be in air? Second question. A light ray starts in air with an angle of, oh, let's say 35 degrees to the normal. When it bends, its new angle is 21.7 degrees. What is the index of refraction of this new material? Both of these equations are just going to use Snell's Law to find the answer, but in one of them you're solving for theta and in one of them you're solving for n. Um, these problems are pretty simple and straightforward, and this is going to let you be able to do quite a bit more of the UT Quest. 
It's going to let you do the next concept builder. Um, and then this is what's going to lead into our discussion of lenses on Monday. All right. Um, oh, secret question. Um, what's your favorite color? How's that? I like it. All right. You guys have a good night and I will see you soon.